Hello, and welcome to Java Library's Lesson 3 for Cup of Java. I'm Andrew, and today we'll be looking more in-depth on how to make the experience more dynamic for the user. So let's start with a quick review of nodes. Nodes are categorized in two types, branch nodes and leaf nodes. Branch nodes are nodes that contain other nodes on the node graph. They tend to be more organizational and help create menus. Leaf nodes are the more visual element of nodes. They tend to be stuff like buttons, text, or images, and they can't have children nodes, but they tend to be more customizable and are what make programs interesting. Positions for child nodes, which can be both branch and leaf nodes, are typically set relative to the parent node, although certain parent nodes will prevent children nodes from being set in certain layouts or changing their position entirely. It all depends on the type of branch node. So you can see in this example, you have a toolbar which contains three buttons, and that toolbar is inside a vertical box which contains the toolbar and a plane that contains 20 buttons. So you can see, since we put the toolbar in first, it gets set up at the very top with its three items in the bar, and then below it, you have the 20 buttons all in a row. Alright, so let's revisit buttons. Buttons, as discussed in previous lessons, can be initialized as a button class with the new button and button text in the argument for the constructor. The text can also be set later with the set text function. And buttons are pretty self-explanatory. They can be clicked on by the user. By default, they don't do anything except highlight the button, but you can use the set on action function to set what a button does. You can see this in text where you have value and then an arrow and then in brackets you have code. We'll get to what that means later, but all you have to know is you put what you want the button to do in that code. You can also disable a button with set disable as true or false, true being it doesn't work anymore. So you can see we have a very similar setup to one we had last time, except now the item buttons are replaced with colors that you can change the background to. So we can go and test that out. So you can see it starts tan, but we can click white, black, or tan to change the background. So you can see with the code, we set the toolbar background to a color and the vertical box background to a color. And that's what makes them different. It's not changing one whole value. You have to change the values separately. But we do that in the code so it happens instantly. So now we can just change the background with a button. You can do more. But this is just the example we have. So while changing the background color using JavaVex's set background can work, it also is really long and inefficient. So, JavaFX also includes styling via CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and is more commonly used for styling websites and other stuff along with HTML and JavaScript. But in JavaFX, you can also use CSS to style the colors and the borders and all the different types of things for different nodes. So, the syntax is you have what you're changing, colon, the value, and then semicolon, then you can chain them together in a single string. So, in JavaFX, it's different from normal CSS. We have hyphen, fx, hyphen, and then what you want. So, we have border width, border color, background color, font size, text fill. A lot of these can be accomplished with functions in JavaFX, but it's often more convenient to just put it all together in a set style or in its own sheet. So, you can use set ID and do other CSS stuff to make everything look pretty. So, you can see in this example, we change buttons to look very different from each other than the normal plain gray they are by default. So we have a background color and text fill. Those are pretty self-explanatory. But then we have font size border width, which is the width of the outline of the text. And we can set the border color so we can make it bigger and set a border color. And then we can also change the width and height of the buttons, the preferred width and height, because some branches won't let leaf nodes have different sizes but we can use the CSS to make the buttons different so for example if we wanted the border width to be 50 I don't know how it would look, it'd probably look kind of funny but we can do that, you see it takes up most of the button but we can do that all without having to ch do separate functions, having to worry about this nested class stuff that JavaFX makes you do we can just do it all very simply, very easily, and very conveniently Next, let's move on to another basic feature of JavaFX, which is text. As opposed to just making buttons, you can also just plain display text. 
It doesn't play as nicely as buttons do for formatting, which is why it hasn't been used much until now. But since we're going to be covering other stuff, we're going to go over it. So text has a lot of ways to change the text, even outside of CSS, which you still can use. So you have set text, which obviously sets the text. We also have set font with JavaFX's font class, where you do font capital dot font lowercase, then parentheses, you put the name of the font as a string, and then comma the size, but you can also put font weight and font posture to set bold and italics, and other s stuff in between, if you want. And then you can use set fill to set the color, set stroke to set the outline, set stroke width to change the outline width. And then set underline and set strike through are their own functions that you have to set to true. And then you can set the origin if you want the text to center at a certain point. And same with set wrapping width, where you can set the text to have a new line because it won't do it on its own automatically. And so you can use that to change text and to just edit it to your heart's desire. Text areas, however, are more of an input, where they allow the user to type in whatever they want, and you can input the default text. It doesn't show what it, it doesn't act as a hint, which is in other text entry fields, where it kind of goes in the background until you start typing. This starts out as the text in the window, and you can get it for your own functions and other stuff with the get text function, and you can set it manually with a set text. You cannot use the text styling functions and methods I just discussed. You can still use CSS for both of them. Although you can still set the font. As you can see here, we have Times New Roman, and it's bold, and it's larger. So you can use the font class to set the font very nicely. So, as you can see, the text area allows typing whatever you want. All the cool stuff. The background is, as you can see, we set the background color to a red, but it doesn't change the background of the actual field. It just kind of changes the outline because the field will be as big as it can unless you constrain it. And so that makes it somewhat annoying when creating programs because it'll just be as big as it can. You'll have to put stuff below it or just manually constrain it when it doesn't just limit its own size. So I've been kind of dancing around it, but when we've been doing events like the button clicked event, we've been using an unconventional way to write functions. This is not the normal way Java does it, but it's at, it was added fairly recently because there's a thing in a lot of other programming language, known as a lambda expression. It allows you to write functions without giving them a name, also known as an anonymous function if you've heard that before. And in Java, you have the input followed by an arrow and then the code for the function. And it's used a lot in JavaFX for creating actions because the alternate way is creating an anonymous class and overriding a function in that class, which just takes a lot more code and it's just a lot harder to understand. So this is a lot much more easy and elegant way to write functions for these set action functions. With that being said, let's go over how the mouse works in JavaFX. The mouse must be accessed through a mouse event which has the get x and get y for the position relative to the start of the window. So 0, 0 would be the top left of the window. Each component has a mouse event individually through set functions. You have set on mouse moved when the mouse moves, pressed, released, dragged, which is when clicked and moved, dragged over, which is similar but more, I guess, broad, more specific. Exited, which is when the mouse exits the item, and enters when the mouse enters the item. These only activate if the mouse is over the node or component that it's set on. So you can see, since we have a pane here, the pane will always activate because the pane takes the whole screen. And the pane will take the X and Y coordinates of the mouse and get out an output color to show it. So we can go check that out here. So you can see it has red and blue, the X and Y of the mouse affecting the red and blue. So if we go all the way to X and to Y, we have full red. All the way to the Y, we have to go full blue. And somewhere in the middle, we have pink or purples and different shades. And since it's relative to the screen, to make the screen small, we have a much more drastic and quick change between the colors. And we can change it from red. We can do all those things. It uses 
a bit of a complicated conversion system to convert the percentage of the way it is across the screen into hexadecimal to be used in the string for color. And we don't have to make it just set on mouse moved. For example, we can do set on mouse pressed and then redo it. And then suddenly, now it won't, it'll only update once we click. And so conversely, we could do set on mouse dragged, which allows us to have the same cool effect from before, but only when we want it. So we unclick, we stop, we click, and we can do it to our heart's desired. We can also do, let's say, on mouse exited. That doesn't, it kind of does and doesn't do stuff. It's not as consistent. Actually, it's pretty consistent. But you can see when we exit the screen, it updates. And we can do mouse enter to do the opposite, where we enter the screen. It's not perfect because it's checking. Because if we do it fast enough, then it kind of freaks out and doesn't really do it. But if you do it slowly, then it should work. And if you don't have something taking up the whole screen, it will be more consistent. Because it won't have to lose track of it whenever you leave the actual window. Since it won't be leaving the window, it'll just be leaving the component. And finally, we have ways to customize the mouse type. So we can set the cursor type with the set cursor function for the scene, or really anything. Actually, yeah, just the scene. Yeah. We can set the cursor for the mouse using the scene.setCursor function. Has to be the scene, because only the, the scene has an overall control of the mouse. It's not for each individual component. And here we have all the different cursor types you can use. These should be pretty familiar to you once you see them. So default is your standard mouse that we have here. And then you have the hand for clicking on stuff, move, resize, you know, the different arrows, none if you don't want a cursor, weight is the loading symbol and all that. It'll probably change depending on what operating system you're using, but the idea should still be the same. The JavaFX program will remember what the last mouse you, you, you set it to was when you re-enter the window, as it does not have control of your mouse outside the window, only in the window. For example, in the snippet of code below, you can see we set it to a hand when the mouse is pressed, but set to default when the mouse is released. Even if we drag the mouse off the screen, it will still activate the when released and return it to default. But if we didn't have that default thing, then the program would be stuck with the cursor being a hand once you clicked unless something else set it off. So if that was your only change, then once you clicked that button, or once you clicked on that button, not necessarily click that button, then the cursor would be a hand forevermore.